So now that we kind of have a better understanding of all of the tools on the left hand side, let's play around with the options on the right hand side here, our studio. So we know our layer studio. If you tap on the options below the layer studio, it looks like two pages with a dog-eared corner. If you tap on that, that's your pages studio and that's all of your different pages. So what we'll be likely working with a lot here are not just the pages and the order of the pages, but also your master spreads. Whatever you put on a master spread will show up on all of your pages. So um, by selecting these little arrows, so let's tap on the right hand arrow, it'll take you to our masters, and then we're gonna double tap into, into that master page, and it's gonna pop up a blank spread. So whatever we put on this spread is gonna show up on all of the different pages within our file. So whatever we put on this side, which is our left-hand side, will show up on our left-hand pages, and whatever we put on this side will show up on our right-hand pages. So for example, if you're doing some sort of like magazine or like I said, a promotional booklet or something like that, you may wanna add numbers to your pages. So what I like to do is just select my frame text tool, zoom into the corner, and then create a frame. And then I'm gonna tap into it. And then what I want to do is add in um, a page number. So if, making sure that's selected, go into your document menu and then select insert. And then you'll be able to insert filler text, um, breaks, symbols. Um, and if you select fields, you'll get an additional pop-up. And what you'll want to do is select page number. And if it's not popping up, it could be because the size of your number is quite large so what you'll want to do is just double tap into that and then adjust the you can adjust the font so i'm just going to select arvo for now and then i'm going to bring this down to like a 15 point and then i'm going to give it enough room so that if i need to have double numbers i can and it won't it won't disappear because there's not enough space for it so once i've done that you'll see this little number sign pop up and that's how you know you have your number field added in. I'm going to place it exactly where I'd like it. And then I'm going to go into my edit menu. Icon is selected. I'm going to go into my edit menu. I'm going to select copy. And then I'm going to scroll over to my right hand page. Zoom in a bit. And then I'm going to select paste. And it'll paste it in for me. And what I want to do is just kind of make sure it's in the same position. And I can also adjust this and align these numbers. I have magnetic set up, but I can also use my, I can zoom out and I can use my move tool to select over both pages. And then I can go into my align options up here in the upper menu. You'll see like, it kind of looks like graphs on its side. You'll tap on that and you can align up top and then it'll make sure that these number icons are aligned up top. Now, when we go back out to our main pages, these should be applied to all of them. So let's go in by tapping into our main pages and yep, you'll see the numbers now pop up. So if there's different elements that you're adding to your design or your layout that need to be on all the pages, utilizing your master spread is a fantastic way to go about this. I want to show how the align panel works a little bit more in detail um, by adding in some shapes so we can see better how it works. Um, so I'm just going to do some rectangle shapes. I'm going to create a few of them and then we can work on alignment. I'm going to actually remove the, the pattern fill here and I'm just going to change it from bitmap to just a base, basic solid fill. And then I'm gonna update the color in my color studio here. All right, now I'm going to copy this and paste it. So I'm gonna make sure it's selected. I'm gonna go into my document or my edit menu. I'm gonna select copy and then I'm gonna paste it twice. So we have three total. And already we're kind of aligning things because we have magnetics turned on. But if we were to not have magnetics or we wanna have very specific like adjustments in terms of detail for how we are placing these elements, 
what we can do is utilize our alignment tools. So I'm going to select, I'm going to like place these all funky and then I'm going to select them with the move tool by dragging over all three of the, the elements. And then in my top menu, I'm going to select my align functions. I'm going to align them to the bottom. And then I want to make sure that the space between them are equal. So I'm going to select that align tool again, and then I'm going to space them horizontally so that the space between each of these three squares is equal. So you can utilize these to get very specific detailed placements. And then I want to go back to our studios and I want to play around with our FX tools. So, or with the FX studio. So I'm going to tap on my color studio, pull it in, go towards the bottom and select the icon that says F and X. So here we can add things like embossing, 3D elements, add shadows, Gaussian blurs, and things like that. So I'm going to select one of these squares and we're going to give it um, just a basic shadow, an outside shadow. Um, so I'm going to tap on the outer shadow it's towards the bottom and I'm going to toggle it on and then once I've toggled it on what we want to do is tap on outer shadow and you'll get these options to the left hand side and this is where you can adjust how wide and how dark the shadow is and how offset you have it and this kind of allows you to play around with these more kind of like 3D feeling effects. That's the kind of cool part about working digitally, even though it's not an actual 3D, um, a 3D environment, you can still make things look and feel a little bit more realistic using these 3D options. You can also, once you're done with that, just tap on your move tool again, and then you can turn on, say something like a bevel or an emboss. Once you've toggled it on, tap on the words and then you get your options to the left here and it's just a really simple drag kind of tool and you can adjust it so that it looks more like a button and it gives more of that kind of like 3D feel to a shape. You can also apply Gaussian blurs. Just once you've tapped on it, you can increase or decrease how blurred you want something to look or feel. And if you don't want it, you can also turn it off by just toggling all of these options off as well. All right, once you're done, you can just tap out of it and you can leave it as is. The next thing I wanna look at are the transform tools within the transform studio. So on the right hand side, right underneath our FX studio is our transform studio. This will allow you to adjust the order of your elements. It'll allow you to adjust the position and the placement, rotation, um, and you have uh, access also to the alignment options here too um, by just selecting alignment options. So let's go to a shape where you'll be able to see the difference once we flip and rotate. So I'm going to select this heart. When we're in these transform tools, if you select flip and rotate, you can flip and rotate vertical. You can also flip and rotate horizontal and change the placement of your elements here. You can also change the order. So say you wanted this square to be behind this heart. So I'm going to move it around so we can see this a bit better. So what we would do is select the square and then go into our transform studio and select the order. So you can adjust the order by sending it behind, moving it to the front, sending all behind, and playing around with your placement here. You can also adjust the position of where your elements are on your screen based on the X and Y position. Same thing with the rotation. You can rotate things using the rotation option. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're exporting, especially if you're doing something for a print or even if it's just digital, um, you want to keep in mind things like bleed hazards. You'll be able to see pre-flight pre errors um, in the pre-flight studio. And that's just telling you um, that there's potential bleed hazards. So issues where things will get cut off. So in this case, it's the numbers are too close to the edges here. Um, you'll know because it says M, which is master. So I just go back into my pages studio, go into my master spread, double click, and then just move my number so that I have ample space between the side and the bottom. 
and then I can go back out into my main pages and that looks good. All right, so you just wanna make sure that things are within your required um, spacing. So anything that is outside of, for example, if we turn on our preview again, anything that's outside those blue lines would be considered a bleed issue. Um, so again, you might wanna adjust how wide these are in your setup, um, but also kind of like play it by year two. I know that this is not gonna be a bleed issue um, because I'm working in uh, an actual digital file, but if I were to print it out, as long as I have enough space between my top edge and my edges, I should be fine. Um, but that's what these guidelines are there for, to kind of help ensure that you don't have any issues with your bleed actually cutting off elements of your layouts. All right, so now that we've gone through pretty much the basics of the tools and the studios and your menu bars, let's export this so you can know how to save, and then we can jump into setting up the file for our actual planner. So to save the file, you'll wanna go into your document menu and you can export and you can package. Um, so typically packaging a file includes saving all of the image, and the fonts and whatnot within a folder so that wherever you know you're shipping it off to um, they'll be able to access it in case anything needs to be fixed so this is really kind of more of a print process but i just wanted to mention it but what we'll be doing is exporting our files for use in something like good notes so we'll export it as a pdf so we're going to select export and then we're going to select pdf and then what you'll want to do is select pre uh, PDF digital high quality, or you could do PDF digital small size because depending on how big your file is, that will have an impact on how easily you're able to use that file within an app like GoodNotes. So you don't want to have lagginess and things like that. So you'll likely want to save it as a smaller file. Um, so PDF digital small size is a good option. You'll want to export as not spreads, but all pages because you want them to be individual pages. We're laying them out up in that kind of facing style so that we see what they look like when they're next to one another, but we want to export them as single pages. Um, but we'll touch more on that when we're actually exporting our final file. Um, but for now, just select all pages, RGB. Um, I like to resample as by cubic because I feel like you get a better um, crisper image with that resampling option. And then once you have all of your options selected, you can update your file name. I'm just going to name this sample because this is like our sample practice. And then we don't need any of these, but if you were to send these to a printer and they wanted things like prop marks from printer's marks, you could turn these on as well. And then hit OK. And then decide where you want to save it. I'm going to save it on my iPad in my Affinity Publisher file and then select Move and it will save that file within that file in my system. So I'm just gonna to kind of like pull this out and X out of this. I'm gonna pull up from my dock bar and then tap on my file folders, go to my iPad and then go to Affinity Publisher and my sample file is right at the top. So that's how I know it, it exported and saved properly. You can also go back out into your gallery. So I'm gonna pull in these options. I'm gonna tap on that little arrow to go back out into my gallery and you'll see this little hamburger menu. You can select save as and save it as um, an affinity publisher file that's editable um, in case you wanna pull it over to something like an external hard drive. I'm gonna name this sample and it's gonna be a .afpub. I'm gonna hit save and then I'm gonna go into my files on my iPad, select Affinity Publisher, and move it here so that I have the editable version in there. And, and this is just a great way to back up your files. Once I've saved them out of here, I can then transfer them to something like an external hard drive and save them there as well. And that way I don't have to have all of these files taking up space on my iPad, I can close them out. So for example, I can just hit the X and I can close without saving because that was just like a sample page that I was opening up and I don't need it anymore and it's no longer gonna take up space. 
Um, you can also swipe across and you'll be able to save, export, or duplicate your files as well. So I can hit that little double and it'll duplicate. Um, this will save and this little down save. This will be save and then save as. So this is just like kind of a quick action that you can utilize to save, save as, and duplicate. If you're done, if you don't want to do any of that, just tap and it'll go away.